and welcome to Voices of Diversity, Voices of America here at the Brockton Public Library. We're all very thrilled and happy to have you here. My name is Mark Walsh. I am a professor of literature and philosophy on the other side of town at Massasoit Community College. And I just want to thank you all for uh, coming out to this, to this great event. Um, but before we begin, as I do at the beginning of each class, I just would remind you if you could silence your phones so in the, in the middle of a verse we're not, we're not hearing, you know, can't buy me love or whatever it is that you have your, your, your phone set to. Um, there's a, a little fragment uh, of a poem that uh, Walt Whitman wrote that reads, American air I have breathed, breathe henceforth also of me, America ground that supports me, I will support you also. So tonight, uh, supported on this American ground, we are gathered in this public space to celebrate the strength of Brockton's community through our diverse voices and experiences. We are assembled from 11 separate pieces, Haitian Creole, Russian, Arabic, Gaelic, Vietnamese, French, Cantonese, Greek, Spanish, and American Sign Language, 10 distinct languages brought together under one banner of poetry and drums. We have a percussion ensemble with us tonight, Hakate from Bridgewater State University. Thank you very much for being with us. Now, by day, I, I teach poetry, I read poetry, I, I interview poets, and I even write poetry. But by night, I'm a drummer in a rock and roll band. <laughs> so poetry and percussion. I know where I'm, I need to be tonight, and I'm, I'm very glad that, that you're here too. Um, before I turn it over to our next speaker, I just want to give a word of thanks to Mr. Paul Engel for providing us with the space, for, for, for helping us uh, present and promote the arts here in Brockton. And so without further ado, would you please give a round of applause and a warm welcome to Brockton's Poet Laureate, Philip Hesaurus. <clears throat> My grandparents, Philip and Vasiliki, fled their beloved Greece separately for fear of persecution from the Turks after World War I. They migrated to the United States where they found each other and fell in love, married, making Brockton their home. In 1925, my mother, Alexandra, was born right here on Center Street. The year before, 1924, on a little island in Greece named Sifnos, on a tiny village, Castro, 4,825 miles from Brockton. My father, Demetrius, was born. After World War II, my father joined the merchant marines of Greece as to make money to support his mother, brothers, and sisters. Where he was the youngest, it was his responsibility. He found his way to New York, where his shipmates brought him along on leave to Brockton to visit friends. There, he met my mother, fell in love, and after a short courtship, they married. Just as it is today, my father then was an illegal immigrant. He had to cross the border into Canada and re-enter with my mother to become legal. My father kept up his responsibility and continued to send money to his family every month while they both supported my mother's mother, my Yaya, and here I am. I was immersed in the Greek culture, Sunday school, Greek school, anything associated with the church and traditions until I became a teenager. Then one word, rebel. Still, I kept the Greek culture, but the language slowly slipped away. I met Linda, fell in love, married, and had two daughters, Caitlin and Sarah. 
that I can proudly say are both teachers here in Brockton. As you have heard the story of my family, it is the story of many of us here tonight, how we separately found our way here like threads. We wove a tapestry, our language, customs, beliefs, as my late wife would say, we are all the same, only different. This evening is a celebration, a reawakening to connect with our heritage, our grandparents, fathers, mothers, language. We hope to honor not only them, but also you on this night as we rejoice in our diversity, culture, proclaim our ethnicity, affirm being American. I am a Brockton boy, proud of my city streets, born to parents from a foreign land, drawn here to find prosperity and finding so much more. I am a Brockton boy raised in the bosom of the city, Walnut Street, Ash Street, Kensington Place, Park Road. Infant, child, youth, teen, young man, now adult. I am a Brockton boy educated by streets, playgrounds, schools, aware that my city took in all ethnicities, nations uniting, sharing customs, the dignity of heritage. I know how to swear in 10 languages. <laughs> I know the taste of diverse cuisines. I've had my heart and spirit crushed, then raised up to feel the blessing of forgiveness. I felt the city experience adversity, and with a one-two punch and uppercut, came off the ropes and beat back misfortune, champion rising time and time again and again. This city will not be counted out. I am a Brockton boy, married, uniting two cultures, raising two daughters, fulfilling a promise to our ancestors to pass along my respect for a city that shaped values. How to be human, how to feel, how to pay it forward. My daughters now are teachers, caring and sculpting our children's future. I am a Brockton boy blessed and raised in a city built on hard work, a city of honor, a city like no other, welcoming open hearts with firm hands. The brick and mortar of this city lined along the streets by calloused hands that laid a foundation of stories passed down from generation to generation, a city tough as leather reshaped, the toil of sweat tears and determination, the soul of a people uncompromised, a city that puts one foot in front of the other. This city, resilient, has given me the life experiences to shout out loud, I am a proud Brockton man. Your boy has grown up. Thank you very much, Philip. Now, will you please welcome a few words from the Honorable Mayor of Brockton, Mr. Robert Sullivan. Well, good evening, everybody. Uh, for those that are visiting the City of Champions tonight, I welcome you. Uh, when we look at this banner, it's not just a word, it's a special place. I want to thank Paul, I want to thank Phil, I want to thank the Library Board, the Library Foundation, all the men and women that work in this special place every single day. Andrew Carnegie, Carnegie gave us money to build this special place, and it truly is a special place. So tonight, it's about a gathering of coming together. We all have similar stories to Philip, my own. My grandparents came from Ireland to work in the factories. I was baptized right across the street at St. Pat's, and my grandmother went there every single day and prayed the rosary. And my wife, Maria, her family came from Italy. Same thing, same thing. They worked in the factories, and it was the shoe capital of the world. So tonight, you're going to hear, uh, and you're going to listen and learn. And that's what it means to come together as one. We don't always have to agree in, in life, but it's about making a difference. And Brockton has always made a difference in everybody's life. I am a proud Brockton boy myself. So tonight I welcome you for being here. Please enjoy yourselves. I just got off uh, six months of campaigning and I told my wife, thank you, I told my wife and I told my wife and my kids when I started campaigning again that 
the Saturday after the election, win or lose, we're going out for a family dinner. Amen. Tonight I'm going to a family dinner at 6.45 and I was successful, so that's a good thing. But I want to just say thank you for being here. There's so much to be learned when we gather together. God bless each and every one of you and welcome and enjoy the City of Champions. Thank you all. Thank you, Mr. Mayor, and please enjoy that well-earned meal. <laughs> now, ladies and gentlemen, uh, would you please welcome the director of the Brockton Public Library, Mr. Paul Engel, who has a few words. Hello, everyone. Welcome to the Brockton Public Library. Um, I have something in common with our host tonight. I'm, I'm also a musician, and I think most of you know that by now. And when I was in grad school, I used to uh, have a, a mantra that I would tell people. I said, I used to close the bars. Now I close the libraries. <laughs> <laughs> and so here we are 30 some odd years later, and I'm in a library after hours getting ready to dig poetry. How cool is that? <laughs> I'm, I'm really looking forward to hearing the poems tonight. I'm really looking forward to hearing your music tonight. Um, and I don't have much more to say to that. I, I, this is a wonderful event. And I've heard a lot of these poets. And uh, even if you don't understand the language, just, just dig, the, dig the sound, you know? That's, that's what we're here for. So folks, uh, without further ado, let's get on with the night, okay? Thank you. Thank you, Paul. Okay, so just, just one, one word here for the poets uh, uh, when you come up here. So uh, when, you, when you come up to read, as we've been doing, you can remove your mask and you know, speak right into the mic. Um, there's enough distance there from the mic, and this room is, the acoustics in this room are outstanding, so I think you will, you will be heard no problem. So um, I'm gonna tell you a little bit about each, each one of our readers, just give you a little bit of their bio, and then we'll invite them up to, uh, to read in the language they're, they're going to read in. Uh, and so our, our first poet is going to be reading in Gaelic, and this is Tom Daly. Tom Daly's poetry has appeared in the North American Review, the Harvard Review, the Massachusetts Review, 32 Poems, Fence, uh, the Denver Quarterly, Crazy Horse, Prairie Schooner and Witness. He is the recipient of the Dana Award in Poetry. Future Cycle Press has published a collection of his poetry entitled House You Cannot Reach, Poems in the Voice of My Mother and Other Poems. He's the author of a play, Every Broom and Bridget, Emily Dickinson and Her Irish Servants. We please welcome Mr. Tom Daly. Thank you, Mark, for that lovely introduction. And thank you, Philip, for organizing this evening. I don't usually talk like this. I was born in the United States, but I thought for the evening I'd put on a little Irish accent. You'll forgive me if it lands a bit, little bit in the middle of the Atlantic, between, halfway between Galway Bay and Tin Pan Alley. <laughs> so, uh, there was a bit of a misconception in the article in the Boston Globe about this evening. Some of you may have seen it last Sunday. It said that I write poems in Irish Gaelic and I'm going to be reading you some of those poems in the translation. Well, I'm very sorry to tell you that is not the case. I did study Irish Gaelic in college for about a year, but honestly, that was a long time ago. And all I remember is Dia Mora Hrit, which is the Irish greeting God and Mary to you, and the reply, Dia Mora Hrit Agus Padraig, God, Mary, and Patrick to you. And if you're really devout, you can add about six other saints going back and forth. Anyway, I, uh, as I said, I haven't written any poems in Irish Gaelic, and I can't really pronounce the language, so it's a bit of a, it's a, bit of a mystery as to what I'm doing here. <laughs> but anyway, uh, Philip said that we could take a poem in Irish and try to translate it, and that would be good enough. So that's what I'm doing. Now, I did look in a lot of different places for poems that would be appropriate, but I realized I wasn't going to be able to do justice to the Gaelic pronunciation, so I found a lovely little video on YouTube by something called Bite Size Irish, 
and there's a lovely young woman who's reading a traditional poem in Irish called The Wind. And she's not only reading it in Irish, but she's given the English translation and reading it phonetically and, and actually spelling it out phonetically. So I thought, oh, this will be a good one for me. This is the right one for me. So uh, if you're wondering where my Irish accent came from, I do have cousins in Cork, and, and I've spent some time with them. But probably my greatest influence was Irish waitresses and hostesses I worked with over the years. The two most uh, remarkable, memorable ones were Noel Doyle, who was a hostess at the Boston Park Plaza and worked the lunch shift. And she had a very harsh Irish accent. She'd greet the guests, good afternoon, how many in the party, please come. And then she'd say, enjoy your lunch. Enjoy, so you'd, all afternoon you'd hear, enjoy your lunch. So we started referring to her as, enjoy your lunch. We'd say, is enjoy your lunch here yet? Then there was another, much more soft-spoken hostess who worked the breakfast ship, and her name was Maureen Martell, also from Ireland. And Maureen was a lovely lady. She was in her 50s. She had a Rubens-esque figure, and she wore granny dresses. And some of you may remember that the, state, the Commonwealth of Massachusetts tried at a time to get Boston drivers to be polite. Good luck to that. <laughs> and they had a campaign slogan was, a little courtesy won't kill you. Well, one day a mischievous busboy took a bumper sticker with that slogan on it and pasted it on Maureen Martel's derriere. So all morning, she's greeting the guests. Imagine you're coming into the Boston Park Plaza for breakfast, and this rather large Irish woman greets you and says, uh, good morning, how many in the party? Uh, please come. And she turns, and she's walking on. The little courtesy won't kill you on her dairy air. Anyway, that went on all, all morning till Mr. Duffy, the vice president of the hotel, came in for a late breakfast, and he was a bit scandalized, as you can imagine. Anyway. The poem I found, as I said, is called The Wind. It's a traditional Irish poem. I'm not sure when it was written, but it's, it's, and I'm not even sure if the version I'm reading, which is modern Irish, was the original. Irish went through, like English, Old English, Middle English, and current English, while well, Irish went through the same phases. So what I'll do is I'll read you the poem, and then I'll read you this Shuan, who was the name of the woman, who, her translation, or somebody who worked with her, for, and then I'll read my own translation. So this is a poem is called The Wind, in Irish, Na Uiha. On hui a dui bin shikrua, is quoran shikruam ar huini. An we an nias bin shitesh is quor an shi ro er hilta. An we an er bin shi sherum is quor an shi shuk is tiha. An we an er bin shi fil is quor an shi iski leonta. Now. Here's the translation by bite-sized Irish. The north wind is hard and it depresses people. The south wind is damp and it makes seeds successful. The east wind is dry and it produces frost at night. The west wind is favorable and it puts fish in nets. Well, if that's a poem, I'm the, I'm the uncle of the Taoiseach, the Irish Prime Minister. <laughs> I'm afraid that's not even a decent prose translation. So not knowing Irish exactly, what I did is, and this is what a lot of poets who claim to be translating do. They don't know the language, but they go and look at a dictionary, and they see if they can figure it out. And I'll tell you, if you're interested in this little trick, there's a dictionary on the web called Wiktionary which has every little, uh, every little manifestation of a verb or a noun or an article, all the declensions, all the conjugations, so you don't have to go looking up in a grammar book to see what matches with what. 
So I found some words, and I decided to take poetic license and embellish a little on this short poem. I'll read it to you twice, because you know how poems just kind of vaporize. You know, they, just, they seem to just go so fast. So I'll read it to you twice. But thank you, you've been a lovely audience. Thank you. The Winds. The wind from the north blows bitter and stiff and slaps a gray grimace on earthlings. The wind from the south flows humid and damp and bestows its ripe bounty on seedlings. The wind from the east will shiver you dry as it spackles rough frost of an evening. The wind from the west transports you to luck, and it trains all your fishnets to teeming. I hope a little more poetic than the west wind is favorable and it puts fish in nets. Anyway, here it, here's the translation again. The wind from the north blows bitter and stiff and slaps a gray grimace on earthlings. The wind from the south flows humid and smooth and bestows its ripe bounty on seedlings. The wind from the east shivers you dry and spackles rough frost of an evening. The wind from the west transports you to luck and trains all your fishnets to teeming. Thank you. Thank you, Tom. I was, I was right back in that tavern in Killarney when you, when you were giving that. You brought that around beautifully. And that's very true about translation. I know when I'm trying to dust off my Spanish, I try to translate Pablo Neruda poems, and I end up doing horrible translations, which are amazing poems in their own right, because that's just Neruda. So our next speaker is going to be uh, presenting the language of Cantonese, and this is Christina Lu. Christina Lu's parents escaped China's cultural revolution, settling with her to live in New York City's Chinatown. It's in this backdrop that informs much of her writing. She holds a BA in writing, literature, and publishing, and an MFA in creative writing from Emerson College. Formerly an ESL counselor and a translator, she is currently the Senior Academic Advisor and Liberal Studies Faculty at Boston Architectural College. She dreams in spare moments of green places, rushing waters, and dumplings. Would you please welcome Christina Liu. Hi, everyone. Thank you so much. Um, really, this is the first reading that um, I feel like I've been to in, in two years, um, with the exception of Zoom, which is always a little bit disjointed and weird. So thank you. It's really nice to be here. Um, you know, I, I really struggle with what to read um, first, and the issue whether to read in English first or read in Cantonese. So translation is very interesting in that I was told by um, actually Danielle Legros George, a, a fabulous poetry instructor and Haitian American in uh, at UMass Boston, that there's the literal translation. There's, um, there's a very, very loose interpretation, which isn't even a translation at all. It's like in the spirit of the original. And there's somewhere in between. And I, I think it's always so tricky to figure out where you land. Um, with that being said, Cantonese is my first language. But um, sadly, I was having this conversation with my husband in the car. I, I'm losing it quickly because I don't use it enough day to day. So um, bear with me. <laughs> I think what I'm going to do is actually read um, a poem which you know, it's, it's kind of a modern predicament in, you know, not just a, a Chinese hyphenated American's life, but I think in, in the lives of so many women. Um, I think you'll be able to glean this by the title. It's called Perfect. Perfect. I am never late. My cuticles push in perfectly pink, crescent moons of smile and bow of my back, acquiesce to all men and elders. I've memorized the color wheel, not a drip of blood on white jeans. How is it that I've timed each giggle, high and warbling, tuned to crystal? 
My orgasms always coincide with the other. I then make toast, shimmy up the stairs in black silk, scent redolent of mangoes and feathers. I never snore. Today, the sea calls herself by her own name. My voice contains gravel, opium, saxophones. The blood pulse at first unfamiliar forges on and on. To walk solitary on city streets, to smile for no one, what is this? So I'm going to try this in my native Cantonese. Fei 沒有血 Gohoi And I think I have two more poems. Um, a longer, a fairly longer one called Lunar New Year, and this was actually published in um, the Mass Bib Library Guides um, in, in honor of Asian American Pacific Islander Month pre-pandemic, which um, as you can imagine for our community has just been, for all of us really has just been gutting um, but this, is, this was written way before COVID, so pre-COVID. It's called Lunar New Year Poem. I dreamt of blood-red canary pages edged in saffron. One horizon, one dash. The pigeons outside our grime, our cracked glass overlooking Triborough Bridge, our tribe warbled. I was always afraid of firecrackers each new year. Couldn't tell them apart from red envelopes, red badges, red shame on my face at the food stamps and lunch tickets. My sister and I never had strawberry jello until public school. Quivering and intact in its artifice, we swallowed while a fire crackled new animals, ram, pigs, tigers, dragons breathing in our small cavities, sharp tongues lashing on our faces, blood welts. Sunning sea. Ngo fan gao, ngo nam yo hong sik, yat lu. Yo yi wong sik, yak a line, yat tu ho. Dejo 我妹和我, most, most strawberry jello. There's no translation for strawberry jello. Hi, ho, how? Yummy, John. Ho, ga, face on ho, ga. What are you sick? What are you tie? The four. Lawson, mato. Dingo. Ju. Fu. 
龙龙，咳细龙，我哋嘅面俾人打，有血，非常好痛。I think I have room for a really, really short one if I can find it right now. Yes, like many things.、Um, <laughs> This is about food, which I love. It's about more than food.、Um, it's very short. It's called broken skin. Broken skin, mandolin, grated ginger, snap peas, and chopped celery. Look at what bleeds for you. Tonight, look at me filling your stomach. My 皮肤烂咗，有音乐。啲姜同埋啲父母有菜，好好食。你今日睇我流血啦，今晚睇住我，我非常好饱，我爱你。Thank you so much. Thank you, Christina. That was wonderful. Our next poet. We're reading from Arabic. Is Salsa Zahara? Salsa received her Bachelor of Arts in English Language and Literature with a minor in translation. She holds a Master of Education in Tisol and a Doctor of Education degree in Language Literacy and Cultural Studies from Boston University. Salsa is the chair of the Elementary Education Department and professor of Arabic and ESL at Massasoit Community College. The poetry she writes was influenced by Arab culture and the Lebanese War. Would you please welcome my friend and colleague, Salsan Zahar? Thank you. Good evening, everyone.、Uh, I am an amateur poet. I'm not a professional poet.、Uh, most of the poetry that I write、um, has been written long time ago. Occasionally, when I have to read something, I look them up and I, I update them a little. So today I'm going to read to you two poems. One of them, let me put it a little bit in context. I grew up in an Arab culture. Arab culture is a little bit conservative. So when I was about 15 or 16 years old, I had a crush on someone. But in Arab culture, we're not allowed to date when we're younger.、Um, So I got caught and I got disciplined for it. So, but I'm going to tell you the story、uh, about my crush. So that's my first poem that I'm going to read.、Um, it's called. I'm going to read it in Arabic first, and then I'll do the translation after.、Um, Arabic language also has two kinds of、um, dialects. There's a standard dialect, which is fusha, and some of the poems that I've written were in that. But the ones that I'm reading today are in the colloquial dialect, so it's softer, more easily flowing. So the poem goes. Let me just put my glasses on. The poem is titled、uh, "Forbidden Crush," but in Arabic I called it "Ajab Mamnua." Basamli min al baranda, mar wujhi, urhat la jua. تخبيت ورا البرداية اتأمل ابن الجيران اللي هو نطرت تاني يوم بشو تيطلع على برندا يتهوى مشت شعري لبست تياب وطلعت أس الزريعة واتغوى التفت بلحظة تشوفه وبتسملي وتلوى شهور مرقت على هالحكاية وفجأة أمي نادتني لجوا روحي عاد كان يجي بيلي حامض هويت له تينزل من توا وقفنا وجه الوجه لأول مرة وقلبي صار ينط من جوا وبسمتي على وجهي واسعة وعم بسمع اسمه اللي هو مثل البرق مرقت هاللحظة ما قدرنا نقول 
كلمتين سوا وفجاه بيمرق عمي من جنب الدكان وعلى كتفي ايده بتسحبني بياخدني على البيت ودغري لايد امي بيسلمني من يوم ما عادت ابدا مشوار لبرا في سمحتلي وعن دهرة البرندا حرمتني ومنعتني وبالبيت قاصصتني So I'm going to read the English version of that. It's a little bit funny. So it's called A Forbidding Crush. It's about a young boy that was a neighbor of mine. He was in his balcony. I was on my balcony. So it says, he smiled at me from the balcony. I blushed and went inside. I peeked from behind the curtain to examine our new neighbor's son. I eagerly waited for him the next day to be on the balcony again. I combed my hair, I dressed my best, I pretended to water the plants, casually looked around and smiled at him and he smiled at me again. Few months went by and my crush grew. And to my surprise, one day, my mother sent me out to the store to buy some lemons. Lemons of all things, Irish and Arabic lemons. So I took a risk and waved at my crush to come down. We stood face to face for the very first time, smiling and not able to find the words and barely uttered our names. My heart was jumping out of its cage, finding some courage to say a word. And to my dismay comes my uncle walking by. He puts his arms around me and tells on me to my mom. I had disgraced the family and for that was physically punished. Needless to say, I was never ever allowed to be on that balcony alone again. <laughs> My second poem is a little bit more serious. Uh, it is about my immigration story, kind of. Not in detail, but it is a little bit um, about me leaving my country. And in that poem, I had written it when I left my country to come to the United States, and that was very long time ago, 1986. I came as a graduate student. But recently, the country, my country has always had war. I come from Beirut, Lebanon, and Lebanon has always suffered um, outside war, foreign wars, civil wars. So I, I, I have a teenage daughter who always asks me things and I say, I don't know, mom, I grew up in war. That was my teenage years. Um, however, these days the country is going through economic turmoil and people are fleeing the country in the same manner that they did when the country was at war. So I wrote this and I adapted into it a couple lines from a famous poet, his name is George Chabaz, that talks about leaving the country as well, and I give him credit later for that. So I'm gonna start with the Arabic part, and it says, leaving, rahfil. Kibirtu am bisma, bilbnan al-ghali, u Beirut al-sumud, illi samuha, Paris al-sharq, وجمالها ما له حدود واهلها بتتجمع وبتفرح بس دايما لوقت محدود وبتتجدد فيها الازمات وحكامها ولا بتوفي بوعود بس بقلبي في حرقه وجرح كبير من الوجود بعمري ما شفت ما اقسى وحروب كثيره وكسر وعيود خسرت الامل انه شوف بس مات امي على الخدود لما خسرت خيي فادي لنار المدافع والبارود 
خلص وعلى قولك يا جوج خباز عزريني يا بلادي يا بلاد الحروب أنا تعبت ومش قادرة على هيك دروب أنا فالة منك مقهورة تفحان الكيل من الهروب مش لاح أمال وأعمال ولا بلد تاني محبوب أنا لاح أحساس الأمان اللي فيكي مش موجود أنا لاح شوية حرية اللي ضمن حيطانك ممنوع أنا لاح شوية كرامة للأيام الجاي بلا دموع بس يا بلادي رح أرجع لك في شي يوم ورح زور فيكي كل الأوم بس عزريني يا بلادي لأني مش رح أبقى إلا كم يوم لأني تعبت من التهديد على كل مفرق من توجيه اللوم So like I said, this is a little bit more serious and forgive me if I get a little emotional reading it. It says, leaving. I grew up hearing of the glorious Lebanon and of Beirut that will never surrender. Her name was Paris of the East and her beauty is limitless. Her people would gather and cheer, but alas, only for a short while. For trouble begins again, and its rulers do not keep their promises. In my heart, there's always an ache from an everlasting wound. In my homeland, I saw so much sorrow from wars and broken promises. I lost hope that I will ever see a smile on my mother's face when I lost my young brother, Fadi, to the bombs and fires of your wars. Enough, my homeland, enough. Forgive me, land of divisive religious fires. I can no longer bear those treacherous wars. My heart is broken, but I can no longer live here. I am searching for safety. I cannot find amidst your wars. I am yearning for freedom that I cannot taste behind your walls. I am looking for some dignity to spend the rest of my days without sorrow and tears. But my homeland, don't you fret. I will be back to visit, but I will only be a guest, for I have grown weary of having my religion threatened at every roadblock when I am stopped and when it's checked. Thank you. That was absolutely beautiful. Our next poet is going to be representing the Haitian Creole language. And this is Jean Danny Joachim. Jean Danny is a poet, fiction writer, and playwright. He created the Many Voices Project, inspiring conversations about race and equality. And he's the director of City Night Readings, a series featuring diverse poetic talents. He is, a he is an adjunct professor at Bunker Hill Community College, and he serves on the board of the New England Poetry Club. Will you please welcome John Danny Joachim. Greetings. Thank you. Thank you. I'll be reading you two poems. One is the voice of the immigrant taking its place, taking his place, her place, wherever he finds himself. And the second one is the voice on a, of an immigrant in something like a long letter to the place left behind. The first poem is called Immigrant, and I read it in English first, then in my native language, Creole, Haitian Creole. Immigrant, I am from the ocean. I am from sugar cane. I am from writing poetry. I am from happiness. I am words with no curves. I am the mainland with no boundaries. I am hope tainted with shadow. 
I am heavy rain. I am here. I am now. I am staying. Immigrant. Moi, c'est petit lambe. Moi, c'est petit chancon. Moi, c'est petit poésie. Moi, sorti dans triple la joie. Moi, c'est parole sans chapeau. Moi, c'est grand la comme pas gain lisier. Moi, c'est l'espoir qu'un ballon braille. Moi, c'est tempête la pluie. Moi, c'est sawaya. Moi, c'est kounia. Moi, pas fait yon pas quitta. Yon pas nago. And now the second poem is called, in English, it is called An Autre Discourse. An Autre Discourse. And in Haitian Creole, I called it Yon Lot Parole. Yon Lot Parole. I will read the Haitian Creole first for this one. And please, all of you can just pretend and feel it. And I'm going to ask if two of the drummers want to dare give me a beat, anything that will. Your Lord Powell. Yon l'autre parole. En vingt journées infinies, on va l'écrire un texte long pour le pays. Yon texte qui a fait longue tout pied boyo, collé ensemble. Yon texte qui a fait m'offrir, tant qu'on grène la pluie, sous feuille mazon belle. Ma pécri parole, ma pécri parole. Ma bécri parole li jan, pays a besoin qu'on y a. Parole en vant tout bagay, kap fè nou tout, tout nè youn, ni sa la ville, ni sa kan province, ak tout sa ki lot bo. Piti, 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 piti. Tek sa, se pou tout te a. Tek sa, se pou te a qui s'est dit qu'elle n'a nous toutes, j'adais un code de l'ombre de tout le monde. Mon riche, riche, mon riche, mon petit moyen, et ça n'a pas été dit tout. Ma bécri dans le texte, j'en ai belle, les nous en paix, j'en ai c'est un peuple plaisir, qui remet ri, et fait phrase, un peuple solide, même les nous pas montrer ça. Piti, 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 piti. Ma pécri dans le texte, parole qui a semblé à rêve, yon rêve tant longtemps, nous continuons à faire tous les jours. Yon rêve l'union à libération. Piti, 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 piti. Moi, pas perdu de temps à parler de l'histoire du pays. Moi, pas perdu de temps à parler de l'histoire du pays. Nous tous déjà connaissons. Ma profite pas les dessins que nous devons faire pour nous arriver plus loin. Fois ça, fois ça, moi pas parler des soleils là. Moi pas parler des soleils là. Moi pas même parler de la mer qui fait vivre un pays là. Moi pas dire rien sous ciel là à toutes ma connes étoiles. Pitié, pitié, pitié. Ma fait un tir aller tout petit sous rivière à pied boyo. Glo sous notre tête mon cap canal et glisser descend pour plein criche à canari pour nous pas jamais soif. Texte la parler de toute bête volaille, oiseaux libres, oiseaux caloge. La parler des bons gens vent qui vantait pour calmer chalet. La parler des rendez-vous la ligne à soleil. De yé tête mon. Piti, 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 piti. Ma bécri tek sa sans difficulté, sans paquet de réflexion, sans chercher mot spécial ak métaphore. Tek sa fait ak souf pays ya. 
takes la fête à tout pays. Si domi ta pati avem, si domi ta pati avem, texte a continué tête li pour compte li, pour l'offrir une autre parole, une parole hygien, pays a besoin qu'on y a. Thank you. And now. And now my translation in English. I wrote this in Creole for, for the country. Haiti needs a lot nowadays. Haiti needs friends. Haiti needs gatekeepers to be friendly, to open gates, to open doors. Haiti needs allies, you know. Haiti also needs that his children stop crying. I don't want to cry anymore. So, in English, an other discourse, an other discourse. Before this day ends, I will write a lengthy text for the country, a text as long as all the trees put together, a text with brand new words like raindrops on Mazombel leaves. I will write urgent words that the country needs at this moment. Words that before anything will join us once more. Us from the city, the countryside, and all of us abroad. This text will be for the land that is a part of all of us, our umbilical cord, very rich folks, rich folks, folks with little means, and those with nothing. I will write in this text how beautiful we are when we are at peace, how we are joyful people who love to laugh and crack jokes, a united people, even if we do not show that. I will write in the text words that resemble a dream an old time dream that we still dream every day, dream of union and liberation. I won't waste time thinking about the countries, talking about the country's history. We all already know it. I will talk about what we need to do to move forward. I will not speak of the sun this time and won't even speak of the ocean that encircles us. I won't speak a word of the sky and its colony of stars. I will make a short mention of rivers and trees, water sources from the hills rushing down to fill up jugs and canary so that we never have to thirst. The text will speak of all birds, free birds, cage birds. It will speak of the good breath that comes to calm the heat. It will speak of the moons and sunrise rendezvous behind mountain tops. I will write this text without difficulty, without lots of thoughts, looking for special words and metaphors. The text will be made with the country's breath. If sleep will take me away, if sleep will take me away, the text will continue on its own to offer an urgent discourse that the country needs at this moment. Thank you very much. Thank you. So we're going to continue on here. The poem in American Sign Language. I'd like to welcome our next poet, Sotiri Constantino. 19-year-old Sotiri Constantino is the son of Julia and Dino Constantino. He is a student at the Marie Philip High School for the Deaf in Framingham, Massachusetts. He enjoys photography, design, ASL poetry, and art. In April of 2019, he received third prize for an art competition among the deaf schools of the United States of America. So will you please welcome Sotiri Constantino.
So Terry is going to is going to sign a poem, and then afterwards I'll I'll read it. The heart lays still, stillness of my mind. Exhale, feel the gentle breeze against my reality. Gray surroundings that encase me now brighten the day with colors. Give rise to this symphony, colors thrown at the heart, recall to mind stories of you and I. Memories fall into teardrops, into raindrops. The heart flows in silhouette of past and present. Dare we dream the future? I wait for you to wash over me and listen to the rhythm that unites us. I inhale multiple colors all the while inhaling you. Do our hearts crack these tiny fractures? Do we coexist with colors mingled? The human condition does not tell truths or lies, but it is in the moment, the now, we make our faith a new language, inhaling multiple colors, clinging to the air, waiting to be held between us. Like butterflies ascending aloft into the air, colors and sounds multiplying, all you need is love. Butterflies begin to flutter whose wings are violins. Our next poet will, will be representing the Greek language, and this is Adeline Fistetis Ellenberg. The daughter of a Greek immigrant, Miss Ellenberg attended Greek school in the afternoons, learning the language, culture, and history of her ancestors. As a writer and as a lawyer, she finds her inspiration in the lives of the many people she meets from all walks of life. So will you please welcome Adeline Fistetis Ellenberg. Thank you. I'm going to read first in English, then a Greek poem, and then a very short Greek uh, English poem. This is My Greek Father's Pursuit of Happiness. My father was green eyed, black haired, a six foot tall man, a Greek raised inside modern Turkey, a Christian pebble 
facing the rising tide of persecution, who left for America the moment World War II ended. In America's heartland outside of Chicago, my father planted young trees between the new sidewalk and curb, where once wild wooded land was replaced by suburbs. My Greek father could breathe big in America, be at peace with his neighbors, know that there was justice for all and that everybody could stand tall, engage in their own personal pursuit of happiness. I was a child when I found out America wasn't perfect. I was seven when I sat cross-legged in front of the black and white TV to watch Martin Luther King speak painful truths and hope to our country. I grew up watching the horrible string of public funerals followed by Vietnam and Watergate. My father and I watched the television news together. We talked economics, philosophy, politics, but especially history, both Greek and American. How the concept of democracy and citizenship was born in classical Greece, Athens to be precise. How those principles led our American founders to build this land of promise and goodness, albeit imperfectly. Yet my immigrant father taught me to see our country through his immigrant eyes, because he loved America so. America is just us, all of us, together, ordinary people, all of us, flawed, all of us, we hope, still lovable and loving, loving to one another, beloved to one another across our blessed land. God bless our America. Yes, I proudly remember my Greek father who sailed out of Turkey, site of ancient Troy, who sailed into the Mediterranean Sea and across the Atlantic Ocean like a modern day Odysseus, bound for his distant home, all the way out to the wild and free Montana, deep within this shining land between two oceans, where he studied, became an engineer, a husband, and eventually my father. Yes, I proudly remember my Greek father, Stamatios Herodotos Vistedis. May he rest in peace. Greece is an ancient country. It goes back to the Homeric times, which I referenced in Troy and Odysseus. Then it goes back to the classical times of democracy in Athens. In modern times, it was subject to, to Turkey and was under the dominion of Turkey. It won its independence 200 years ago. In 2021, this is the 200 year anniversary of Greece winning its independence. This is a patriotic song from Greece. Segnorizo apotinkofi tu spathiu tin tromerin. Segnorizo apotinkofi pou me via mesrati yi. Apotinkokala via meni ton elinon te iara kesa proti a tromeri. Hiera o hiera eleferia. That gives you the sound of the language. And what it means, the equivalent is, my country tis of thee, sweet land of liberty, of thee I sing. Land where my fathers died, land of the pilgrim's pride from every mountainside. Let freedom ring. Thank you. Our next poet will be reading and representing Vietnamese, and she is Jessica Tran Nguyen. 
from Brockton High. Jessica, absolutely. Jessica comes from a life full of color and wisdom that this virtuous place called the universe has given her with the people and nature that she is surrounded by. She was born here in America, but her ethnicity is Vietnamese. Ms. Nguyen has many artistic interests and aspirations that make up who she is as a person. One of those is framing pieces of figurative language and the wizardry of speaking to create something she likes to call poetry. <laughs> Jessica Tran Nguyen. So I have a few poems in Vietnamese that I want to read today, but first off, I want to start off with this poem in English that has to do with um, the Asian American struggle. So it's called Chinese Silence number, 20, um, number six, 62, and it's by Timothy Yu. So we come from every nightmare scene in which our silent black hair heads fill every inch of a paper screen. We come from every teeming brain that rocks to sleep with lullabies of yellow peril on an eastbound train. We come from every smoking gash, dynamite blasted in the Rockies' flanks a golden mountain streaked with ash. We come from every Chinatown that's a railroad camp turned tourist trap in the heart of your all-American town. We come on every boat that's turned away or cast ashore our words. A mute graffiti before the barracks burned. We come from every Ivy League geek squad and math team monastery, invisible in technocraft fatigues. And we come to every state, from Maine to California, to whisper words like wind through the American grain. That's a poem that I wanted to start off with because it's kind of a theme into what I'm reading today um, in Vietnamese. Um, it's not, it is all my poems that I'm reading in Vietnamese don't all necessarily have to do with the, the Asian American struggle that I have read in the first poem that I've read. I just wanted to bring up the importance of that topic and bring awareness to how, um, as an Asian American growing up, I feel like I've seen a lot of uh, struggles and injustices that I have faced myself personally that I would like to bring to light in a positive way through these poems that I have written in China, um, not Chinese, Vietnamese, sorry, it just gets to me a lot because then again, growing up, people have like, stereotype me and to think that I'm Chinese. That's not the only Asian ethnicity out there. There's lots more diversity and cultures in Asia A lot of people that a lot of people miss and not that stuff. So I want to bring awareness to all of that by bringing more culture and diversity to what is the Asian ethnicity. So the first poem I will be reading is called Mui Sung Kien and it's by Hang Mak Te Tu. Trong làng nắng ẩn khói mơ tan, đôi mái nhà tranh lắm tắm vàng. Sột soạt gió triêu là tao áo biếc, trên giàn thiên lý bóng xuân sang. Sóng cỏ xanh tươi gợn, tối trời bao cô thôn, nữ hát trên đời. Ngày mai trong đám xuân xa nấy, có kẻ theo chồng bỏ cuộc chơi. Tiếng ca vắt bẻo, lưng chừng núi, hồn hờn, nhưng lời của nước mây, thầm thi với ai ngồi, dưới trúc, nghe ra ý vi, vị và thơ ngay. Khách xa gặp lúc mùa xuân chính, lòng trí băng, khuân sức, nhớ làng, chỉ ấy, năm nay còn gánh thóc dọc bờ sông trắng nắng chang chang so this poem um, is just about spring it's a very innocent and just upbeat poem about this poet writing about the scenes that he sees through spring and what spring means to him in the Vietnamese um, during the Vietnamese springtime and all that stuff so the next poem that I wrote was what I personally wrote um, it's called Vay mẹ, and it has to do with my mom, or just mothers in general. So, sáng sớm mặt trời thức dậy, con chim đã bay qua cảnh mùa thu. Những sự ấm áp của mẹ con làm con tươi mắt và biết ơn. Mẹ đi làm sáng sớm dậy 
Thổi, thổi cơn cho con buổi cơm Sự yêu thương của người mẹ của con Không bao giờ kết thúc trong linh hồn của con Không bao giờ đâu mẹ yêu The next poem I will be reading is just about my parents in general um, So it's called Con hiểu means meaning I understand Nếu một mai thấy cha mẹ già yếu Hãy con thương yêu và thấu hiểu song thăng Khi mặt trời lặn và các vì sao mọc Những kỷ niệm của mẹ cha sẽ tạo thành trong trái tim con Không có giọt mắt nào trong trái đất này mà mạnh bằng sự tình thương của con Con thương cha mẹ nhiều lắm Hãy hy vọng rằng tình yêu của chúng tôi sẽ mãi mãi cho dù mặt trời lặn So that poem, I'm um, gonna explain it a little bit. It just has to do with the relationship between um, your parents and yourself and how uh, there's an everlasting bond of love throughout your lifetime and that I said that wherever I go, um, how far or how close we are together, our love will always be strong even if we're all away up on the moon. <laughs> so the last one that I wrote, this is all like a family theme. So the last one I wrote is about my family. It's called My Blood. Gia đình đôi với con là sự quan trọng nhất. Tình thương của mỗi cô chú, ông bà là một điều ấm áp và an ủi trong trái tim của con. Không có gì trong vũ trụ này mà vững chắc giống gia đình của con. Mỗi buổi cơm trong nhà đem cho con một điều vui vẻ. Con mong cho sống chung bên cạnh của gia đình con mãi mãi. Ngay cả khi nó có nghĩa là chúng ta đang ở trên mặt trăng cùng nhau. And that's all I have for you guys today. <cười> Next we have Ali Brioso, and she will be representing Spanish. Born from two diverse Latino countries, El Salvador and Santo Domingo, Ali is known as a passionate community organizer in her 20 plus years as a resident in Brockton, president and founder of Diverse Initiatives Neighborhood Association, host for the Brockton Library Poetry Series, Everyone Has a Voice, next event on the 20th of November. Her passion for the arts blossoms each day in the belief it is a versatile tool much needed for creative expression, communications in today's society. Please welcome Ali Brioso. Thank you very much for the ability to sit down and not host. Wonderful. I, first I want to um, thank everyone who has attended who is here. Um, I am not a professional poet, a seasoned poet. I am as I am. And I'm here as a voice of many in this country that have migrated or been birthed in this country from those who've migrated here. I uh, am a MDMC and host for Everyone Has a Voice, and those who attend there have also read here, Christina, and, um, and also know my style. I vibe with what I hear, I vibe with what I see, but most I vibe with my heart, my mind, my body, my soul, and my faith to the dear Lord. So, Believe it or not, I pressed my way and I made it here to say these words, three pieces. When we think about the Latino culture, when we think about the Hispanic, what is a Latino, what is a Hispanic, what is English, what's Spanglish, what is Spanish? I'm here to read in English, Spanish, and Spanish, and Spanglish. <laughs> And I also, you might hear me freely flow from English to Spanish because it's just natural when you become bilingual. My original form of speech um, has, was Spanish language, but when you start kindergarten and preschool in the United States of America, you begin to take that language your parents first known to teach you as your child begin to simmer away. So Spanish was my primary language. English is my primary language and Spanish secondary. But now since I've married a Dominican, which is my husband Manuel Vizcaino, it's now intertwined in a Spanglish kind of way. So they're equally both my language. Okay, that was a freestyle. 
<laughs> so, um, my mother's name is Teresa Guzman. Teresa Guzman migrated from El Salvador. She passed away. She died a month ago. And in the memories, I don't think I've really tapped into an emotion yet, but in the memories of my mother and what it is to be an immigrant, to migrate here, I created a poem. And believe it or not, what you'll see today is an average person sitting down at their table in 90 minutes before I had an hour to prepare to come here, I created this set. That's encouraging all who wants to come to Everyone Has a Voice and re read in our open mic. So, we're here to learn, says Paul Ingle, with the respect to the Brockton Public Library. Aquí nosotros estamos para aprender, dice Paul Ingle, que es el director de la biblioteca. La dedicación de esta poema va a ser para mi mamá. Y también vamos a aprender la diferencia que es un emigrante y un inmigrante. A emigrante begins with an E. E-M-I-G-R-A-N-T, correct me if there's a missing M, okay? To immigrant, immigrant is the letter I. I, there's a difference, because my mother left her land as an E, which is E, immigrant, to come and put her flag down to raise up the American flag, which was all over her bedroom, and even on her stone today in Cambridge Cemetery. And she then became an immigrant. Mi mamá, la, la diferencia de un emigrante y un inmigrante, so the e in, uh, in, in, in Spanish, we would say it's e like Edward because I is e in Spanish. So, la letra e en, in, en inglés es para Edward, pero si nosotros decimos la e, que es el sonido de inglés, se oye como la e in español, como India. So, un emigrante con la letra E es uno dejando su país a viniendo aquí en Estados Unidos de América, dejando su bandera para levantar la bandera americana, entonces se ponen a ser un inmigrante. Okay, so I'm gonna go forward. This poem I wrote today, in the memories of my mom. My mother uh, came here, I believe like 1968. Mi mamá vino aquí como 1968. But my father, who's Dominican, which is what my ethnic appearance is all about because I don't look as Salvadorian. Unfortunately, we, we judge by visuals and have expectations of what people look like. But I am as I am, and I come as I come, and I came all the way to here to say, emigrant to immigrant by Ali Brioso. So this poem, esta poema, va a comenzar en inglés with the respect, it is English, my first poem, because my mom died here in Cambridge, Somerville, and she died as an earned American citizen. She went through the testing and she became a citizen. So, la poema es inglés porque con respeto a mi mamá, mi mamá murió aquí en Estados Unidos de América en la ciudad de Cambridge y se murió una ciudadana americana. So, immigrant to immigrant, putting down my native flag to pick up another. Is this the American dream? Two faces of pride and glory filled with sadness, culture shock, many questions running through my head. This is madness. Oh, where, oh, why? Following the steps of my brother, considered to be an immigrant as I leave my motherland behind. This land is your land. This land is my land. So they say, as I became that immigrant. Immigrant to immigrant, putting down the native flag to pick up another, is this the American dream? Fair skin, I am with straight, black, long, beautiful hair and slender hips. Of course, it's my mom, not me. <laughs> my mouth opens wide as I speak, not your language, but mine. Thrusting forward to claim the American dream, stuck by the force of human nature, I find myself standing in line. 
immigrant to immigrant, putting down my native flag to pick up another, is this the American dream? What is this you speak? Not English? Go to where you belong in these United States of America, pushed into a pool of mixed races, Latinos. We are different, I say, in these United States of America, Central American, Caribbean, South American, Latinos. Immigrant to immigrant. Put down my native flag to pick up another. Is this the American dream? Who are you and where am I? Not in this country, I thought. You are brown and I am white, but we're Latinos. Not black or white, separation, segregation. What is wrong with this nation? Stay close to me and I to you. We won't be bought. That's my Dominican father talking to my mother. We are the same even though we are not alike in these United States of America. Immigrant to immigrant, putting down the native flag to pick up another. Is this the American dream? Close together, we became as one as we were told. Birthed in three beautiful Hispanic children, I am one of them, and two Latino cultures, Dominican and the El Salvadorian culture. Ever so more, deciding to be bold, standing tall, firm and all, I went back to in line to take what has now become mine, the right to be an American in these United States of America. Immigrant to immigrant, putting down my flag to pick up another, is this the American dream? That was dedicated to my mother and I wrote it right before I came. <laughs> But in my mind, my husband knows because he was in the living room waiting for me in the kitchen. <laughs> uh, it was dedicated, and ironically, my father's name is Bienvenido. And Bienvenido actually means welcome. So when my mother came to this country five years after my brother has, I mean, my father has seasoned himself, my mother says, who are you, Bienvenido? She thought he just meant welcome, but he said, hmm, you welcome here by my side. <laughs> so you have to have humor because we don't know what we go through, and sometimes it's important to try to identify yourself. For example, we have different Asian groups. We have Chinese, we have Vietnamese. The beautiful young aspired student even acknowledged that was saying references Chinese and Vietnamese, but there's a difference, as I was even telling my husband, who, we, well, I don't understand the language, he doesn't let alone, but Sometimes we think that everyone is the same, but if you take a moment to listen to the voices of our diversified backgrounds, you realize that there's a difference within each and every one of us that we should acknowledge and embrace with full love. So when I think about growing up, as I referenced the uh, uh, Spanish and English language, cuando yo pienso, cuando yo me estuve criando aquí uh, con la idioma español en inglés, entonces, Yo veo que entre mis hermanos y mi mamá, yo hablo con mis hermanos en inglés y con mi mamá en español. So when I think about growing up now, now that my brothers and I, we've been going to school, so we're now speaking English. But guess what? My mom still has to catch up. Yet she was here before we were. So we would talk with my mom and we say, Ma, ¿qué está pasando aquí? ¿Y qué, qué es esto? You know what? This is what Ma said. Right in the same group conversation, we're speaking Spanglish, so we flip it. Then I have um, my husband's uh, niece, who I was with today, and I, I told her, I said, I'm inspired to write a poem. And she said, I think I like to talk about Spanglish. She's a teenager here, she's been here for a couple of years, uh, from the Dominican Republic studying and of course she just, she just put right into straight English because she can't take back the years as a kindergartner with a foreign language to come here to learn. So she said that her friends and her sometimes would do the same but sometimes they do it out of um, humor. You know they would speak English then Spanish and then they would go to, to Spanish. So, ahora, por ejemplo, estoy hablando de su sobrina, que yo pasé el tiempo con ella, y yo le dije que quería le traer un poema que se llama Spanglish. Ese es como 
un inglañol, le dice en español, que a veces uno con las mismas amistades hablan inglés y español, español y inglés a la misma forma. So, but since we're here to learn, as we reference, I'll make it brief, Spanglish is actually a historically, the creation of Spanglish is a widespread language that can be traced back to the inter indoctrination of a significant number of Spanish speakers from Mexico to the United States where the Treaty of Guadalupe Hidalgo was signed with the following Mexican-American war, war in 1948. But since we're here about poems, they're actually in the 1940s, there's a Puerto Rican journalist who actually was a poet and an essayist named Salvador Teal, coined the terms of East Spanglish for Spanish spoken with some English terms and the less commonly used Inglanol for English spoken with some Spanish terms. And I'm taking a moment uh, to acknowledge Inez Figueroa, who's the um, founder and president of Latin Women's Association here in the city of Brockton. Unfortunately, she's not here to represent, but she is our Boricua mom. That's how we claim her in the city of Brockton because she is Puerto Rican. She sends her love and she's working uh, in her association in some upgrades to continue to help those who migrate, who are here, or even myself as, as Hispanic, or even openly to extend to all the cultures because she embraces diversity. Ahora yo voy a leer una poema que es un poco inglés mezclado con el español. So here we go. So this one is called No Es Así. All right. Ponte las pilas, amigo. I'm not a robot. Don't tell me to put on batteries. No es así, amigo. Come in and get ready. Actívate y let's go to City Hall. For what? Para qué? They think and stand too tall. No hay Latinos and I don't think they speak Espanol or Spanglish at all. No es así, amigo. Come on, vámonos. I'm not Dora the Explorer or Diego. No es así, amigo. Nuestra voz es importante to be heard. Now you're talking my language, mi lenguaje. Si sí es así, amigo. Un nuevo Latino employee in Brockton City Hall. Tengo las pilas listas, my friend. Vámonos standing tall. Ya tú sabes, our voices will be heard by all. For those who don't understand this, Brockton City Hall has now embraced an actual employee who is of the Latino community. And that is huge for us because with retrospect, um, the city of Brockton is very diverse. We have Cape Verdean community. We have the Haitian Creole community. We have Italian. We have everyone. But the beautiful thing that I've come across the Cape Verdean community is they're like trilingual, multilingual. They're more lingual than I am because I'm only bilingual. <laughs> so they can speak Spanish, they can speak Creole, Haitian, etc. Even uh, a friend who is from Haiti because they share the island with Dominican Republic, he speaks Spanish and English and Haitian Creole. So that to me is amazing when the expansion of diversity, but we have to acknowledge that sometimes we just want someone from our own to feel that representation, not because we don't feel that we're represented, but this, we all have a story, a journey of life. Whether it's not yours, it can be your grandparents or your family. That's what Generations is about in these United States of America. So Inez Figueroa Chair shared that with me. I have yet to meet the individual, but I embrace the city of Brockton as well. I've been here for more than 20 years. So ese poema es porque ahora uh, en el City Hall tenemos un empleado que re representa a los Latinos y es de, uh, de Santo Domingo, Dominican Republic. So now I am going to close with what we know has gone on in, our, in these United States of America. So when I think about now Spanglish, that was more in the, the adolescence, but I want to take it down a notch to a young child. I am an early childhood educator many moons ago in the city of Brockton. But when I see the news, um, I don't know what it is to be a child coming from another country with their parent because I was born in this country from a parent who came from another country. So, ahora voy a leer una poema en español, pero con la dedicación y la memoria de un niño, una niña más pequeña, porque yo no sé cómo es haciendo un, un, un niño o niña de los inmigrantes a la juventud entran, entrando aquí porque yo nací aquí. So, this one is called Mama. 
Mamá, ¿a dónde estamos? Hija, estamos aquí en los Estados Unidos. Mamá, no somos unidos. Los niños en la escuela se burlan de mí. Hija, está bien. No se preocupes, siempre estoy a su lado. Mamá, ¿a dónde estamos? Hija, estamos aquí en los Estados Unidos. Mamá, no somos unidos. Los niños aquí en las escuelas se burlan de mí. Hija, está bien, no se preocupe, siempre estoy a su lado. Mamá, mamá, no somos unidos. Los niños en las escuelas se burlan de mí. Mamá, mamá. Hija, está bien, no se preocupe, siempre estoy a su lado. Mamá, mamá, ¿a dónde estás? Mamá, no te veo a mi lado en los Estados Unidos llorando. Tengo miedo, mamá. ¿A dónde estás, mamá? Fui a la escuela. No, me, no se preocupe, mamá. Llegué a la casa y no te encontré a mi lado. Mamá, ¿a dónde estás? No estamos juntas. No estás a mi lado en el Estados Unidos. Mamá, 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 ¿por qué se llama Estados Unidos? Porque me llevaron a un cuarto con otros niños iguales. Hablamos y lloramos y gritamos, mamá, mamá, estoy bien porque sé que un día regresará a mi lado. Mamá, los niños aquí no me burlan, Nos, nosotros nos abrazamos y oramos por toda la mamá de nuestro país, mamá. So basically, that was a child who went to school, and a lot of times children from other countries, when they go to school, they get bullied or they get laughed at because they come automatically differently, and some children are not educated, but thankfully now we have more an awareness of their diversity. So the child would always go to the mom, and in Brockton I've come across many single parents, mothers, who actually came together with the young child, and not only just Latino, but just in general, but of the, the Hispanic culture, a lot of times the families don't get to come together. We have now the issues where they just would send your child because they feel as long as you hit the land of America, you're okay, but that brings other challenges. So there was a mom in the north side uh, of Brockton who always had a little daughter. And then every time her daughter, she would send her to school and the confidence of going to school that you'll return back and see your mom. But unfortunately, that is not the case to many children in the United States of America. Many children, if, if you realize, I'm gonna briefly, I'm gonna close out with this, this, this um, information uh, in regards to that. Because awareness is important, we are comfortable, and uh, it's important to know what, what goes on in our country, in these United States of America. So we're gonna take it back before the pandemic. So nearly 70,000 migrant children who were held in the government custody this year, up to 42% in fiscal year 2019 from 2018, spent more time in shelters and away from their families than in prior years. Presidential administrations during that time Series of strict immigration policies has increased the time children spent in detention centers. Despite the government's own acknowledgement that it does them harm, in 2013, it's not even us, but even in Australia, detained 2,000 children during the search of marriage, uh, maritime arrivals. And even Canada, immigrant children are separated from their parents. Only at least resort 155 were detained in 2018. The whole point of this is, is that Children suffer all over the world. But why, when we talk about the American dream, por qué cuando hablamos del sueño americano, do we even have to suffer in these days and times as we do? Wake up, America. Voices of diversity is here. Freedom of speech is selectively heard. But when you can't speak up at your city hall, at your government place, this is why I'm here, because this is my place where I'm out there fighting the struggles that I do because I do, I get to come here and release some of that in words to share here with you. So thank you for coming. All right.
Final poet of the evening, representing French, is Mr. Joseph Polycap. Poet, writer, thinker, Joseph Polycap was born in Haiti and arrived in Nyack, New York in the early 1980s. In the mid-80s, Joseph moved to Massachusetts where his higher education took place with a focus on business, but writing has always been a permanent love. He is an author that cannot be ignored, and he captures people's lives through his multiple disciplinary talents as writer, poet, minister, and counselor. Will you please welcome Mr. Joseph Poitra. Good evening, everyone, and thank you. So tonight, I'm going to be reading one poem in French first, then in English. Quand l'amour se transforme en haine, un amant se transforme en un loup dévorant dans la nuit. Mais le vrai amour est toujours en flamme d'affection et allume passionnément par la lumière du, du matin, comme un soleil qui brille en plein midi dans le cœur. La première émotion est comme un sentiment d'être perdu. C'est comme un sentiment de regret qui apparaît, soit par la prédisposition de penser à nos valeurs où nous nous oublions la, la beauté de nos, de nos années écoulées. On se sent vide, on ne peut plus penser convenablement. La perte d'un amour donne l'impression que c'est la fin du monde. Perdre un, am un amour rend le cœur dur comme une muraille de pierre. Il serait mieux d'arrêter au lieu de vivre dans l'adversité. La reine créait la douleur et de l'angoisse. Des, des amis se demandent ce qui n'allait pas. Un cœur haineux est un coffre qui s'est rempli d'angoisse. Les amoureux trouvent ce qu'ils aiment, aimaient si l'on restait fort. Les promesses, de, les promesses faites dans le passé sont plus, sont plus valables. Le plus dur, l'un d'entre deux, est toujours passionné. L'amour a été jeté comme un bol de salade. La communication doit être gérée comme un grand enfant. Peut-on essayer de, de donner pardon le, le, ah, le regard de l'autre conseil de rester à l'écart. Ses yeux sont aussi rouges comme les camoisés. C'est toujours la victime qui veut rester. Bien que cela soit différent, mais le mieux, c'est de se quitter. La, la lumière de la bougie qui, qui brille aux, aux, aux deux extré, aux extrémités est, 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 est éteinte. Rompre à quelqu'un qu'on qu aimait est un, est un enfer qu'on a traversé. Maintenant, essayez réfléchissez et demandez à quoi bon. That's the French. English, what love, when love tends to hate. A lover turned into a savage wolf of the night. But an other lover is still in flame with love and passionately want to turn on the, on the morning light. So the relationship can shine like the sun above. The face emotions is the feeling of lust. The feeling of hate, fullness appears, either has the capacity to think of the cost. Everyone forgot the lovely years. One feels empty, cannot think straight at all. The lover left makes one feel 
like it is the end of life. A hard-hearted lover is harder than a cement wall. You better quit since it is not worth a life of strife. The hate, the hate that exists creates pain and anguish. Friends are wondering what had gone wrong. The hater, the hater's heart is a stone and fills with anguish. True lovers will find one that loves if one stays strong. The promises made in the past are, not, are no longer valid. The heart, the, the hard part, one of the lovers is still in love. Love was thrown away like a ball of bad salad. Communication had to be handled with kids' gloves. One may try to ask for forgiveness, but the looks from the other says a stay away. His or her eyes are red as crimson. And it is always the victim who wants to stay. Though it is hard, but one might be better off. The candle light that was burning on both ends is out. Breaking up with a bad lover, it's hell one just passed through. Now sit, think, and ask yourself, what was it all about? Thank you. Yes, that was wonderful. Well, I don't know about you, but I had a great time. I had so much fun. I had so much fun that I, I don't know. I think we should do this next year. Yeah. You know? I'm just throwing it out there. So, one more time. Akate. Thank you, Akate. One more time for all of our poets. Great selections tonight. One more time for Philip and Paul and the entire staff and librarians here at the Brockton Public Library. Thank you for coming. Thank you for being a wonderful audience. And now you know where to find us. Please come back. And hopefully we will see you on the 20th for Everyone Has a Voice, where our featured poet is in the room tonight. I need to mention Mr. Knox, who will, who will be our, our featured poet on, on Saturday the 20th. So. 2 p.m. right upstairs. Thank you all very much. Have a safe ride home. <laughs>